Well, I'm very glad to hear that, well, by this applause, you indicate already that you agree with the philosophy that um, uh, Inigo just, just shared with, with you. Um, and you also saw the community of practice on the screen today already. Um, it, it was this jumping group that uh, had this kickoff um, over the last two days here in uh, San Sebastian at Technica. And um, we are basically the mouthpiece of this uh, community. So we'll share some of the uh, topics we've discussed and also how we think we are going to proceed. And like how Inigo mentioned, um, these centers are quite different. Um, a group started in 2019, a group started in 2020. Some are focusing on a, a sector, so uh, for instance on urban greening, on furniture and uh, the, the wood sector, um, but also on advanced manufacturing. So that's like more the sectoral approach. At the same time, we also see uh, centers of vocational excellence focusing on more transversal um, uh, topics. And uh, the movie that uh, Jao Santos showed you from the, uh, the GIVE project is a very nice example of that. Uh, but for also, also the, uh, the Green Events project uh, focusing on, on green skills is uh, another example of these transversal um, centers of vocational excellence. But despite that they are quite different, they also have um, the, these common issues. Um, they have common interests, so they are trying to engage with the, the SMEs in their regions. And how do you do this? Uh, because a center of vocational excellence, I don't know how about you, but to me that is quite a difficult term and I don't know what it actually means. So how do you explain this to the companies in your region and how they can benefit? Um, they're also working on uh, making sure that the students have the right professional skills that Stephen mentioned this morning. So how do you do this? And all these projects are working on this. And thirdly, since they're all funded by the Erasmus program, there's also this very practical side of, okay, well, how do we report back to Brussels? How do you manage a, a consortium of over 25 uh, partners? Because this, this is how big these centers actually are. So because of these common uh, interests and common challenges that they are having, the, um, well, the project leaders two years uh, ago decided, okay, well, let's team up and uh, let's join forces. And Although our kickoff was only uh, over the last two days, we have been working for uh, two years almost already. And the approach we are taking is that this is really a bottom-up approach. So it's not something in, in stated by the European Commission or something that uh, we have to do uh, from someone, but this is really the project leaders themselves saying, okay, listen, let's team up in the philosophy that Inigo just explained and let's see what we can find. So every month we are basically meeting for just one and a half hours, so it's not taking much time, but dive into very concrete issues. So it could be on lifelong learning, it could be on, on involving um, SMEs. It could be any kind of topic, depending on the needs of the project leaders and focusing on how do we make these centers of vocational excellence a success. So it's really pragmatic and really hands-on. And also, we're not inviting experts from all over the place to tell us what to do, but quite often it's peer learning, so the project leaders, they all bring a lot of experience and knowledge to the table. So together we know actually, well, quite a bit. And of course, if there's a question or um, well, uh, uh, an issue that we think, okay, well, there's someone else who knows more, so for instance, someone from the GRC or someone from ETF, then we will invite this person to, well, share the knowledge and so we can build on this. So it's really an open source, um, well, peer learning uh, network. And because of, well, this approach, working needs based, we also see that there's a very high involvement of the project leaders. So uh, despite all the difficulties and all the regulations over the, the last two years in, in traveling, we were very glad that actually all the project leaders took the effort and the time out of their schedules to be here this week. And um, this is something we want to keep up. So we want to make sure that we uh, are agile, that we respond to the needs of the, the project leaders, so everyone well, remains as involved as um, well they, they are currently. Um, maybe to give you an example of um, how we work, because this all sounds nice and good, of course, but um, I, I've named it the challenge of how to involve uh, SMEs, for instance. And uh, about a month ago, we had a, a, well, one of these online working sessions where the Helsinki Business College and the Hansa Parliament in Hamburg um, basically took the lead in preparing the session and explaining how, over the last couple of years, they've been able to well, reach out to SMEs, really make sure that the, the baker around the corner, who does not have much time for well, retraining or for innovations, but how you reach out to those kind of organizations as well so they can benefit from the latest innovations and the latest knowledge in, um, well, in the, um, the COVIDs. And 
Apart from that workshop, we also discovered that actually we have quite a few uh, good examples of these activities already in, um, in the various COVIS. So what we've done is we've created this, this booklet. So it has like a decision tree inside, basically telling um, an, an SME owner, um, okay, well, if you have little time, but you want to do something on retraining your staff, these are the kind of activities you can do. And these are the, well, the contact details of the COVID in your uh, area. So it's really hands-on in reaching out to the companies and to the other stakeholders. Now, I can imagine that you're sitting here and we, we've heard the impressive number of uh, 84 uh, applications this year and next year there will be another call. Um, but I guess there will be people um, in this room who are, uh, well, waiting for the results of this, uh, this call and hope to be awarded a, a Center of Vocational Excellence grant as well. If you're thinking, well, this sounds interesting, I would like to learn from, uh, well, these 12 project leaders would I be able to join? Then the answer is absolutely yes. Um, what we would hope to do as a community is to grow over the years. Um, Zhao told you that, um, well, in, in the end, there will be uh, well, over 100 centers of vocational excellence across Europe in uh, well, the, the funding period of Erasmus. And we hope that everyone who wants to, and again, this is voluntarily, so we won't force you, but everyone who wants to join is welcome to join. And as I mentioned, we are working needs-based. So also, it's not when you are joining that you have to be at the same level as uh, the project leaders who've been working for two years already, or that you have to well, follow their agenda. It's really needs-based. So next year, when hopefully 11 new uh, partners will join, they can also put um, well, questions to the agenda, and we will discuss this and how sh see how we can share the knowledge and the experience. And at the same time, I think that the current 12 members will also be very interested in what those 11 new projects are going to do and what they can bring to the table. So we can really learn together. So to summarize everything, we are representing a community of practices of centers of vocational excellence and the 12 project leaders of the 12 pilot projects are working together. Of course, we are sharing things, we are helping each other, but most importantly, we are helping Europe to, yeah, to shape and to make this great initiative thrive. And the approach is one of union. So with the confidence in the 12 project leaders and with the unbounding determination and with the commitment of the European Commission, we hope that we will make this uh, initiative a successful one. And yeah, thank you very much. Take care and enjoy the rest of the Congress. Mm -hmm.